Hi, I'm Dr. Jackson Crawford. I'm a specialist in the Old Norse language, and since the year 2011, I've been teaching at various campuses of the University of California system, including Berkeley and UCLA, where I've taught classes such as Old Norse language, Norse myth, and the Vikings and their sagas. As of fall 2017, I'm happy to report that I'll be returning home to the Rockies to teach at the University of Colorado Boulder. I'm back today with another one of my videos about a topic in Norse language and myth, and with the recent premiere of the American Gods TV show, I thought that I would dedicate at least one video uh, for those who might know the book or the TV series, but might not have much exposure to the primary sources of Norse myth that are drawn on in making the uh, characters of the show and, and book. I've read the book, so I'm going to uh, include some spoilers, sort of, if you're just following along with the TV show, so be aware of that. I first read American Gods more than 10 years ago sometime when some friends gave it to me. I am usually very reluctant to approach anything involving Norse myth and popular culture because it's just uh, often not easy on one's heart when one uh, makes a living teaching these things. But I was intrigued enough that I read through it and I actually enjoyed it enough that I read it again in the coming years. The character of Mr. Wednesday especially impressed me as being one of the best depictions of the god Odin that I've ever seen in popular culture. So what I want to do today is look at the Norse sources about Odin that are used in the portrayal of Mr. Wednesday. In particular, I'm going to be drawing on the Poetic Edda. The Poetic Edda is the most important manuscript that survives from medieval Scandinavia and is the source of most of what we know about the myths of the Norse gods. I'm going to read from it a little bit today in this video, both in Old Norse, using uh, this edition that is sort of my everyday carry, that contains the Old Norse text along with Modern Icelandic Commentary by Gisla Sigurdsson, and also my own translation of the Poetic Edda into contemporary English, which has been widely available since 2015. The pronunciation that I use of Old Norse is reconstructed Old Norse pronunciation. I teach both the Old Norse language and modern Icelandic at the University of California, so this is not uh, out of ignorance of the Icelandic system, but rather because I prefer the reconstructed medieval pronunciation for reading medieval texts. If you want to know more about Old Norse pronunciation or modern Icelandic pronunciation, I have videos about this that I'll link in a card in the top right. So to begin with, the very name of Mr. Wednesday is a kind of fun joke on the relationship between English and Norse. The name of the god Odin in Old Norse is in fact Odin. This D with a slash through it is a TH sound like in weather. So this is not a D in Old Norse, but Odin, Odin. In English, which is a closer related language to Old Norse, a W before an O does not drop out. So we still have words like worm and wood and word and wolf. But in the Old Norse language, that W drops out. That's why you have Odin in Old Norse, but Woden in Old English, which you'll also see as Wedin, depending on the dialect of Old English. Other pairs like this include Old Norse orth, English word, Old Norse ormer, English worm, Old Norse Ulver or Ulver and English Wolf. So this is a regular alternation between Old Norse and its close relative English. So the days of the week in the Old Germanic languages use the names of the pre-Christian gods. And in the case of English, the name of this god is Woden or Woden, and that's where we get modern English Wednesday. This is Old Norse Odenstagr or say modern Norwegian Unstag, which comes from that. So the use of Wednesday as a sort of uh, code name for Odin is, I think, pretty clever and cool. In the Poetic Edda and in other sources where Odin appears, such as the Saga of the Volsungs, we see that Odin often takes some kind of, uh, of concealing name. It's a little hard to call out a disguise since he usually appears uh, looking about the same every time. One of the most detailed descriptions of him comes from the Old Norse Saga of the Volsungs, 
I'll read uh, just that little description for you from my English translation of this saga, which is coming out in September. He had a spotted cloak draped over himself. He was barefoot, and he had linen pants tied to his legs. He had a wide-brimmed hat on his head, and he was very tall, elderly, and had only one eye. Odin has only one eye because he gave it up in the well of Mimir in exchange for a drink of its wisdom-granting waters. So when he appears in this disguise, typically with a wide-brimmed hat, with his one eye very obvious, often a tall old man with a, a long beard is sometimes mentioned, and he's usually dressed in spots and or gray and or blue. He usually gives out some kind of nickname or deceiving name, as I said, and in the poem Grimnismal in the Poetic Edda, he lists many of these names. This is Grimnismal. This list is uh, referred to a little bit in American Gods in the carousel scene in uh, Wisconsin at the, uh, the tourist trap there. And I'll read you some of his names from Grimnismal. This is stanzas. 46 through 50, and then 54. Hetum Grimmer, Hetum Gangleri, Herian Ok Hjonberi, Thecker Ok Thridi, Thunder Ok Uther, Helblendi Ok Hor, Sadr Ok Svipal Ok Sangetal, Herteter Ok Hnekar, Billoiger, Bolloiger, Bolverker, Fjolnir, Grimmer Ok Grimnir, Glapsfither Ok Fjolsfither, Seed hotter, seed skaker, sick fodder, nickother, all fodder, fall fodder, atrider, ok farmatur, enu navni hetund aldredi, sist e met forkum for. Grim nimek hetu at geradar, en jok at osmandar, en tho kjallar ere kjoka dro. Tror thingum at, oski ok omi, javn hor ok bivlendi, godlir ok horbarr met godum. Svither og svithrir er ek het at sokmimis, og dulde ek than en altna jotten, thor ek mit vidnes vark, ins maram burar orden en bani. Oden ek nu heti, ykur ek odan het, hetum thunder fyr that, vakr og skilvingur, vovdr og hroftetjur, geuter og jokr med godum, ovnir og svovnir er ek hik at ordnir se, allir. Of Enumer. And in my English translation that goes I have called myself Grim, I have called myself Wanderer, Warrior, and Helmet Wearer, Famed One and Third One, Thunder and Wave, Hellblind and One Eye, Truth and Swift and True Father, Battle Mary, Battle Stirrer, Curse Eye and Fire Eye, Evildoer, Spellcaster, Masked and Shadowed Face. Fool and wise man, long hat and long beard, victory father and war ready, all father, war father, rope rider and hanged god. I have never been known by just one name since I first walked among men. They called me shadowed face here at Geros place, but gelding at Osman's. They called me driver when I pulled the sleds and mighty at the assembly. Among the gods, I'm called wish granter, speaker just as high, shield shaker, wand bearer, graybeard. Wise and wisdom granter were my names at Sokmimir's hall. When I deceived that old giant and I killed his famous son, I was his killer. Odin is my name, but before they called me terror, and thunder before that, and waker, and killer, and confuser, and order god, heat maker, sleep maker, both gelding and father, I think all these names were used for me alone. So Odin is a surprisingly tricky and deceptive god, uh, which I think is well captured by Gaiman and American Gods, as opposed to, say, the Marvel incarnation of Odin, who is sort of grandfatherly and gentle. Another manifestation of his tricky nature can be seen in the poem Hovmal in the Poetic Edda. Hovmal is a poem that is actually put in the mouth of Odin in its entirety. This is spoken by Odin. Hovmal is most famous for the first part, the Gestathotr, which is a series of stanzas for advice and daily living, mostly advising us to be uh, wary about other people, suspicious, uh, to be moderate in drinking and eating, to be quiet but not too quiet, to be cautious of our reputation, and many other basic things. But as the poem goes on, Odin tells some stories about himself, 
including the story of how he stole Odrerir, the mead of poetry, from the giants. And in the course of telling the story, Odin says in stanza 110, Bau gave Odin hik ek at unit havi, hot skal hans trigdum trua, sutung svikin han let sumbli fro, ok grutta gunlodum. In my English translation, that goes. I believe that Odin swore an oath to them, but who can trust Odin? He left Sutung deceived in his own home, and he left Gunloth weeping. So who can trust Odin, as spoken by Odin? He is, as he says in American Gods, a hustler. Hovmal also includes the account of Odin's sacrifice of himself to himself on the world tree Yggdrasil, which is repeated by Shadow later in the, uh, in the book when he is sacrificed on Yggdrasil or an incarnation of Yggdrasil in Virginia alongside the, the Norns, Urdr, Verdandi, and Skuld, the three goddess-like figures who control fate. Odin describes his sacrifice in this way in Hovmal in stanzas 138 and 139. Vetek atek hek vinga medi o natr alar niu Geri undavr ok geven odni, sjolvr sjolvr mer, o theim medi er man giveit hors han ab rotum ren. Vith levi mexeldu ne vith hornigi, niste ek nidr, nam ek up runar, upandinan, felek after thadan. In my English translation that goes, I know that I hung on a wind-battered tree nine long nights, pierced by a spear and given to Odin, myself to myself on that tree whose roots grow in a place no one has ever seen. No one gave me food, no one gave me drink. At the end, I peered down, I took the runes, screaming, I took them, and then I fell. Odin is engaged in such a desperate quest for knowledge, he sacrifices himself on Yggdrasil to learn the runes, and he gives up his eye for a drink of the wisdom granted waters of the Well of Mimir, because he knows that he will be killed in the final battle at Ragnarok. The story of Ragnarok is told along with the story of the creation of the world in the poem Volospo, and there we read of what Odin's fate will be in pretty simple terms. Stanza 53, or excuse me, stanza 52 says, Tho kemer hlinar harmer anar fram, er odin fer vid ulvega, and bani belia biarter at surti, tho mun frigiar fala angantir. In my English translation that goes, Then comes the second sorrow of Frigg, when Odin goes to fight the wolf, and Freya goes to fight the giant sort. Then Odin, Frigg's husband, will fall to Fenrir. The notion that Odin and Loki could be jointly coordinating the Ragnarok is not so far-fetched as it may seem. Uh, this is, of course, what comes to light at the end of American Gods during the battle at the House on the Rock in Georgia, near where I went to get my master's degree. The uh, relationship between Loki and Odin is more complicated than, say, in the Marvel Universe, where Loki is Odin's adopted son. In fact, the two of them are blood brothers, as Loki confronts Odin with at one point in the poem called Lokasena in the Poetic Edda. He says that Odin and he swore that one would not be served drink where the other one was not served. So Loki and Odin have some kind of mysterious connection for reasons unknown, uh, some kind of oath that they swore very early in their lives. And of course this is never explained in the surviving Old Norse texts, but the notion that maybe this included the uh, the prosecution of Ragnarok is not, a, not an unclever solution to the problem of what exactly did Loki and Odin swear to do together. Why are they blood brothers? Why did they swear that one would not be served drink where the other one was? On a final note, the ravens that accompany Mr. Wednesday or Odin are alluded to in one of my favorite passages in the Poetic Edda, which is in Grimnismal, stanza 20. 
Hugen och munen flyger skärjan dag jormen grund över, och ek av hugen att han aftern är kommit för sjönk mer om munen. Hugen, thought, and munen, memory, by ravens fly every day, the whole world over. Each day I fear that thought might not return, but I fear more for memory. And I think that American Gods is a novel that deals quite a bit with memory and culture and its, uh, its significance to what we hold sacred or don't. Well, from the University of California, I hope that this has been somewhat useful to you, and I'm wishing you all the best.